So we're doing S equals theta R, and S is the arc length, and theta is the radians, and R is the radius. Okay, so the arc length will be pi over 4 times 10. I'm doing this one right now. And that just simplifies to 5 pi over 2. Now that is what's called an exact answer. Why is it more exact than a decimal? Osterhus, can you tell me why? Because it's not rounded. All right. And if as soon as you take pi and you change it to 3.14, it's not exact anymore. So, All right. Any questions on this type of problem? If I had to have you draw it, I hope you get, would you just draw this next one and try to physically represent what this means? Well, then it would have a radius of seven, so then this would be seven, right? And if we're talking about the arc length with an angle of three pi over two, it would be like this length all the way around to there. So how do you figure out that length? Well, do S equals theta R, so it would be 3 pi over 2 times 7. So that would be 21 pi over 2. Great, right, let's move on. I like to think of this as two 60 degree angles. That makes 120. Why do I like to think of it that way? Because 60s are pi over threes. And then boom, I've got two pi over three. Now, could I have done this by multiplying by pi over 180 or 180 over pi? Sure I could. And this kind right here doesn't just scream out to me. I happen to know what it is because I'm a math teacher, but I, but I don't think you would just naturally know how what the ang base angles were and how many there were. So I don't think this would be easy to do that way. But you could just multiply by pi over 180 or 180 over pi. I can tell it's pi over 180. Chloe, why do you think it would be pi over 180? So that the degrees cancel out. All right. You got it. I think you just got to reduce 225 over 180. That's kind of a pain. Well, 5 goes into both of them. And you'd have a calculator, so you'd be able to use a calculator to do that if you wanted to. All right. So it's just about reducing 225. I'm going to take 225 and divide by 5 because I know 5 goes into it. And that's going to be 45 pi over, and then the 180 divided by 5. will be 36. Well, 3 still goes into both of those. So then I could say that would be uh, 15 times 3 pi over... 3 times, I think it's 18. Nope, not 18. Twelve. Fifteen pi over twelve. Can I leave it that way? No. Because now there's a three goes into both of them. 3 times 5 pi over 3 times 4, 5 pi over 4. All right, these have all been from degrees to radians. What if it's radians and you want it to be degrees? What if you had uh, 2 pi and you need to change it into degrees? Hmm. 
Then you take 2 pi and you multiply it by an important conversion factor. Joel Osterhus, what do you think we should do? Um, times it by 180 over pi. Yep. And the pi's cancel. And then 2 times 180, 360. And that's kind of what you probably would have known 2 pi was 360 anyway. Okay. Any more questions about converting between degrees to radians? Radians to degrees? Okay, then. Let's go find some co-terminal angles. Let's start with 315. We're going to get some positive and negative co-terminal angles. First, got to figure out where 315 is. Is it like here? No, definitely not there. Hmm. I think of this as 270 plus, I guess I'd have to go 45 more to get to 315. Aha, uh -huh. that's where I am. This was 270, and that was 45 more, adding up to a total of 315. And so now there's two different ways I could get here. Everybody figure out two coterminal angles for this one and this one. If I were you, I'd always draw a picture. All right, while you're working on that, I'm going to get attendance done. Let's see if you got these straight. I would call this negative pi over 4. I could also call that negative 45. I could also take the 315 and add 360 to it. You can always do that if you want to generate another angle that's coterminal. Just go around a whole circle again. And you'll be back to where you started, and then you'll end in the same place. So that would be 675 degrees. And last but not least, we could say that this was a whole bunch of pi over 4s. 315 would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4s. So 315 is like 7 pi over 4. All right, so there's several different ways that you could have done it. How about on the 3 pi over 2? Well, I hope that you were, you were thinking that's this spot here. And then I hope you were thinking could be used negative pi over 2. Could also do negative 45. No, negative 90. Could also do positive 270. Those are probably the most common ones. Any other question about coterminal angles? All right. This kind, you're trying to change something from RPMs, revolutions per minute, into miles per hour. Everybody start by putting 400 REV per MIN, and I'd put one just to make it clear, one revolutions per one minute. And then I would try to think of how do I get these units to change? Eventually, we want miles per hour at the very end. So you got to multiply by a bunch of conversion factors. Okay, I'm going to be quiet while you guys try this one. All right, so we've got our 24 pi inches is one revolution. Now we have inches per minute. Is that what we wanted? No, we want miles per hour, so we need to do a little bit more work. Jack Scanlon, give me a factor. Uh, I did 12 inches is one foot. Yep. Inches are gone. We now have feet per minute. Rosemore. Uh, I did one mile over 5,280 feet.
And we now have miles per minute. And Jack's hand. Uh, one minute, uh, 60 minutes equals one hour. Is that minutes one cancels? And we have miles per hour. Awesome. Now, what if I told you you had to give this as an exact answer? That will freeze some people up. They'll be like, I don't know what you mean. Let's see if Hannah Rindles knows what to do. Well, if it's an exact form, then you have to leave the pi in there. So Very good. Multiply 400 times 24 times 60 pi, the least of pi in there, over 12 times 5,280. All right. 576,000 pi over. Six three three six zero. Oh. That's mildly annoying, but it is correct. Could I simplify it more? Yeah, I guess I could actually, because there's a zero I can ch chop off here. So fifty-seven thousand six hundred pi over six thousand three hundred thirty-six. Okay, let's move on. So many things to cover. So little time. Draw the picture. For today, you're going to be uh, drawing about as many triangles and circles as you are on the real test. If you draw this properly, you'll be able to find the reference angle easily. Just draw the little triangle that goes with it. All right, and it goes at least to there because that's 180, but then it has to go more. To get to 225, oh, it's going to go an extra 45 degrees. That makes sense. Okay, and then if I draw the triangle that's associated with this, where's the reference angle? It's the central angle, this one. And that angle is a 45. So 45 degrees is the reference angle. Put your virtual hand up if you knew that. You had that one already. Okay, good. All right. If you do 300, that should be pretty easy because you, I think right away, oh, it stopped short of 360 by 60 degrees. And now if I set that up, it's going to be a 30, 60, 90. And the important angle is though is the central angle. So it's 60. 60 is the reference angle and the central angle. Okay, moving on. This should add a little bit more challenge. Always draw yourself a picture. Now you may recall that I've been saying that this circle trig stuff is the most important unit, I can only say that once, the most important unit of the entire second semester. Because everything is going to keep coming back to this stuff. It will get more complicated, of course, but it's going to keep coming back to circle tree. Which, of course, involves drawing circles. So I'm thinking that I better figure out which quadrant I'm in. It says sine is a positive. See, 8 over 37 is positive, And therefore, I must be in either 
A or S, which is quadrants 1 or 2. Why? Because the sign's positive. See, there's no negative here. And so therefore, it can't be here and it can't be here. And then it says, when theta is between pi over 2 and pi. Well, here's pi over 2, and here's pi. So it's just a funny way of saying that you're not in quadrant 1, and that you are in quadrant 2. So I draw the triangle in there. I always make them short, fat triangles, not long, skinny ones. Because then when you label your sides, you won't get all confused. Because like if you have pre-drawn the sides, and you have one side is 37 and the other side is 8, where the 8 side is actually bigger than the other one, it'll be so confusing. All right, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is 8, and this is 37. Even as it is, it's that that's kind of confusing. But when you make the triangles ambiguous, you can, it, it's easier than when you have one angle that's like really small. Okay, so now I got to figure out what this last side is. Hmm. Well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I like to do it this way: square root of 37 squared minus 64. You could do that with a squared plus b squared equals c squared and take a long time, but it's so much easier to just do this. And when you do that, you end up getting 37 squared minus 64 is 1305. That last side is square root of 1305. Well then, what's cosine? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Square root of 1305 over 37. Now I know, I know, some of you are thinking something. And you're right, but I know. Who's thinking something? Ariel, what are you thinking? Um. Should the square root of 1305 be negative? Yes. Negative direction? That brings up the most common mistake in circle tree. And so many of you are going to look back at your test and go, Oh, I can't believe I did this stupid negative thing. Because you could easily fall in that trap. I caught myself on this one. That's why I said, does anybody notice something? But full disclosure, in a different hour, I just simply made that mistake. So it happens, and it's going to happen to you. If I had any advice for you tomorrow, at the top of your paper, I would write, check for negatives, because it is the most common mistake. And it, you just forget along the way that you're in a different quadrant than quadrant one, and boom, you lost a, lost a point. All right, everybody try this one. And I'll pause for a minute while I give that a shot. Okay, let's see if you did it right. So first step, draw your circle. I like to put ASTC on there. Then I like to try to figure out what two quadrants I could be in. If tangent's positive, then it could only be here or here. And so it can't be here and it can't be there. Next, it does specifically give me a clue. It says that we're between pi and 3 pi over 2. That means this one's out too. And it must be in here. Always draw the triangle. Label sides. Tangent, toa, opposite, over, adjacent. From this angle's perspective, the opposite side is 3, over adjacent side is 4, and this is the classic 3, 4, 5 triangle. And then don't forget the negatives. Did anybody forget? Okay, and then last but not least, we're supposed to find sine of theta. They could have asked us for anything. They could have asked us for angles in there. You would have had to use inverse trig to get the angles, but they didn't. They asked us for sine of the angle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. This is opposite. This is hypotenuse, so it's negative three-fifths. Put your virtual hand up if you won that problem. 
Okay, cool. Thank you. And this is different. This one, I don't want sine of the angle. I want the actual angles. Notice there's plural, multiple angles that give you an answer. And if you can draw triangles in the right quadrants, then you're golden on this. Takira Toringa, which quadrants do you think we must be in for this sine of theta equals a f? Um, a. Yep. And what else? S. Yep. Because those two quadrants are where sine is positive. So good. I draw my picture, and I've got two of them. And sine is from this angle's perspective and that angle's perspective, opposite and hypotenuse, and square root of three. Same thing here, opposite, hypotenuse, square root of three. But this one's negative. Did you catch the negative? All right, anyway. But all that really matters is what are the angles. Across from the 1 is a 30. You need to memorize that. That In the 1, 2, th root 3 triangle, across from the 1, you have a 30 degree angle. All right, so that first answer is 30. And the second answer, it's a whole bunch of 30s. It's 150. So 30 and 150, which are really five sets of 30. And 30s are really pi over 6. And so this would be 5 pi over 6, because it's five sets of 30. So 5 pi over 6s. All right. Now, this next one, I think, is going to bother you. Give it a shot. And we'll talk about it in a minute. I think I'm going to stump a few people. Remember, you're trying to find the angles. So on this one, we come up with, I just need to record this for the video, pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. All right. Now let's see if you remember which one goes with which one. Sine of theta has a what I call a flippin' sister, also known as a reciprocal function. And so sine is not equal to that other function, but it's one over that other function. Do you remember which one goes with which one? I tried to make you think that S goes with C and C goes with S. There are two C's though. But what to me makes sense is the tangent, you just pair that right up with cotangent right away because it sounds like they're supposed to go together. So tangent is 1 over cotangent. That leaves sine s to go with c, which is cosecant, and c to go with s, which is secant. Could you write them backwards? Yep. Secant of theta is 1 over cosine. Cosecant of theta is 1 over sine. 
and cotangent, theta is 1 over tangent. All right, so how does this apply to your life? Just because the test question tomorrow will be something like this. Find secant of pi over 6. And you have to be able to say to yourself, I, I, I'd rather figure out one of the other functions first, sine, cosine, or tangent, and then just flip it. Erica Weeks, what do you think we should do? Um, with one over cosine pi over six. Nice. And if I want to do two cosine of pi over six, I would like to get a uh, triangle first to get pi over six. That's like a 30, right? So this is a 30, 60, 90, and then this is a one and a two and a square root of three. And pi over six is like 30. And so cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. 1 over root 3 over 2. And then that means flip it over. 2 over root 3. That's your answer for your secant question. Just checking me. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying I hope I'm right. How many of you got the same thing as I did? 2 over root 3. All right, good. All right. So let's get to um, some of the quadrantals. That's a quadrantal. That's a quadrantal, that's a quadrantal, that's a quadrantal. All right, and we like to do those in terms of, like if I asked you, what is the sine of 90? Well, it's the same as the sine of pi over 2. And then you're here at this spot, and you've got to be able to use what each point is. Now, I've not drawn this to scale. If I was going to get closer, I'd have to make this go up higher. So I'll just make it closer to scale. And this would be 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0. Now, you should be able to tell me what sine of 90 is. Myung Hai. What's the sine of 90? Is it 1? And why do you think it's 1? First of all, you're right. I'm just asking, you: were you just totally guessing? Or, or what? You must have had something in your mind. Yeah, I, I can't quite. All right. If you memorize that sine is y and cosine is x and tangent is y over x, that'll help. Did my audio die there? Mrs. N, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't die. Okay, good. I had weird stuff happening on my end. All right, so I'd say if I want sine of 90, which is the same as sine of pi over 2, sine is the y, and I just want the y of that point. That's how you do the quadrantals. Let's do another one. Would you figure out tangent of 3 pi over 2? Julian, what's the point at 3 pi over 2? Julian A, are you with us? 
Okay, so there's four points up there, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, and negative 1, 0. Which one is at 3 pi over 2? Okay, memorize this one. This spot right here is where 3 pi over 2 is. Here's 1 pi over 2, here's 2 pi over 2, here's 3 pi over 2. Okay, so it's 0, comma, negative 1. Helena Carlson, which, if I'm trying to find uh, tangent, is that y or x, or what is it? It's y over x, so it just be negative 1 over 0. It would be negative 1 over 0, which would equal what? Um, I don't know. 0? I don't know. <laughs> okay, this is important. When they divide by 0, that means that that's impossible. There is no solution. If there was a 0 on top, that would be fine. If the answer would just be 0. Okay, but this one's got no solution. It's undefined is another way to say that answer. Okay. We've already practiced that kind, but uh, I think it might be one of the hard... This is like hard only because it's new. Like you just learned it on our last day of new material. So go ahead and try secant of pi over 4. I think that might be one of the trickier things for you. And then instead of this one, let's do this. If this angle is pi over 3 and the radius is 8, then what's the area of the shaded region? All right, two completely different problems, but I just wanted to get through all of the last material here. Valerie Nelson, can you tell me what secant of pi over 4 comes out to be? Um, 1 over cosine of 45. I like it. And then I just got to figure out what the cosine of 45 is. I'm going to make myself a 1, 1, root 2 triangle because I know that's a 45, 45, 90. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So from this angle's perspective, adjacent hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. 1 over 1 over root 2. When you take 1 over, it's basically saying, hey, flip whatever's underneath that. So I flip 1 over root 2, and I get root 2. Put your virtual hand up if you had root 2. Okay, good. And now the last but not least problem. Area of a sector of a circle. Well, the area of this would have been 64 pi. But that is if it was the whole circle. And this is only a fractional part of the circle. What part of the circle is it? Well, it's the, it's, it's uh, pi over 3 is kind of like related, but it's pi over 3 out of 2 pi times 64 pi. Where'd this come from? Looks like how many degrees you have out of 360, but it's in radians. I had pi over 3 over 2 pi. If I write out pi over 3 divided by 2 pi, it might help me to change it to times 1 over 2 pi. Pi's will cancel. 1 sixth. Oh, so I have 1 sixth of the circle. 1 sixth of 64 pi or 64 pi over 6. Could that simplify? Yep. Let's cut them in half. 
32 pi over 3. Ooh, I think I have it. All right, we've covered everything. Gave you my absolute best. I am just not feeling on top of my game today. But uh, your test is tomorrow, and I knew that if I had a sub today, it would be the worst day ever to have a sub right before a test. So, um, guys, got any last questions for me? All right, how about this? I'm going to leave it where if you want to ask me questions, I'm going to be in the hall. The Google Meet code is T-H-E-H-A-L-L. -L. And I think I've covered everything that you would need to know to do well today. So have a great day. Say goodbye on your way out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.